Welcome, my lords, to the first ever, and possibly only ever, because of how difficult this is going to be, AI-only campaign for Third Age Divide and Conquer, version 4.5. An AI-only campaign, computer versus computer, good guys versus bad guys, who is going to get the win? Let's find out. Oof, here we go. Alright. Yeah. Next turn. What's gonna happen? I've got no idea. Isengard, they seem to be already on the move. And there we go. As the opener, they have put Foldberg under siege. Yet, Rohirrim reinforcements are on the way. War declared. Isengard versus Rohan. I believe there was a territory change up here. I did see something flash on the map, but I don't know where it was. Could have been this settlement, I don't know. Could have been someone taking a rebel settlement. It's difficult to tell. Eastern Osgiliath is under siege, and that is quite a force. Baramate, better be careful. It doesn't want to die early to that, I don't think. Or maybe it does, I don't know. We'll see. The Orcs were pushed back. Of course, the Garrison script is involved in this AI only campaign, so it could be a little slow. They just lost the Siege of Care Andros as well. Uh, Gondor came re uh, with reinforcements. And Isenbard, Isenbard, Isengard pulled back from Foldberg. Rohan already on the counter attack. Swooping down, putting Durwaf under siege. If that has no garrison script, they could possibly take that. Although reinforcements will probably come in. How is this front here looking? A little bit quiet. I think Gondor has the advantage right now. Um, only just they push back the orcs, uh, which was a good start for them. But you know, Sauron, he'll get his troops back and push again very soon. And of course, this is a massive map. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I miss. That is just part of how this series is going to be, so... Don't be shouting at me in the comments if I miss something. That's just how it is. Well, you can let me know, but, you know, don't expect me to see everything that goes on. That would be impossible. Imladris is under siege. Rivendell... Ah, they can hold against that. That's nothing. Plus Garrison script, they'll be alright. And yes, I believe uh, the, what are these, this faction here? The Veilsmen, they did push south and take this settlement, uh, but Dol Guldur wants it for themselves. Reinforcements coming in, they should be alright. How did it go down here? Rohan pulled back, but they're gathering more troops. Oh, this is a heavy assault. Three settlements under siege on the same turn. Doesn't be difficult though. If I can take all three, then Gondor is going to be in a very weak position. I don't know. I don't know what they'll be able to take here. They'll probably need to get reinforcements in. I believe uh, Tid Huin here did just fall to uh, the goblins. I believe that is what I saw. Rivendell held out, yes, but instead they're going north. They'll probably take that, that rebel settlement there. They took it, and Imladris slowly getting surrounded by the forces of good. And Gondor did repel the orcish attacks. They're trying again to put it under siege, but even without the Gavin Sun script, I don't think they have the troops to take it. That's a lot of orcs. Although Rohan comes with a very large force under the control of Aomir. That is a very large force. They could take a settlement with that for sure. I uh, saw something up here. It's under siege again, but... Oh, maybe forget the reinforcements and they could make something out of that, possibly. That could be a very interesting early game move. Uh, meanwhile, the Haradrim, they're pushing up north ever slowly. Alright, this is their largest attack yet on eastern Osgiliath. If can get some reinforcements in there as well, surely they should be able to take it. Nope, they failed. They failed. Oh well. Oh well. Lorien is under attack. Let's take a look. Yes, it is. Again, they should be able to hold their uh, garrison script, you know. It really does help for AI. 
and Although I don't like it in my Let's Plays, I think it works well for this. Who knows, I may do another series on this someday, using the, you know, the normal Total War, anyone can go to war with anyone, sort of thing. Uh, but without the Garrison script, maybe someday. Uh, but for the team match, I wanted it to be a... I wanted the Garrison script, I wanted it to feel much more real. I don't know where AMA got to, did it pull back? I don't know, could be dead, possibly, I don't know. They just keep coming back with more and more troops every single turn, but you gotta give it to them. Well done, Orcs, for trying. A true inspiration to all. Never give up. Foldberg under siege yet again. Eisenbard. Eisengard strikes back. Alright, Goblins. There's no chance you're gonna take it. <laughs> Mordor taking East Osgiliath, I can understand, but this... This here, this is never gonna happen. Never. Give up now. Lorien under attack now by Dol Guldur. Dol Amroth expanding further south, now bordering Harad. And let's take a look over here. They were pushed back, and Gondor seemed to be on the move, but there's no chance they'll take Minas Morgul. Yeah, not this early in the campaign. We could lose a lot of troops, though. They're a bit out in the open. And it fell. It fell, Foldberg fell to Isengard. They've done a march on in. They've got the Hornberg holding this line. This settlement here is not done a hold. That's a village. Chances are Isengard will take this and eventually this settlement. Uh, but they'll probably be held back at the Hornberg and Edoras. But who knows, who knows with this. Uh, but we got something big happening this turn. An invasion has been called. Oh, this is going to be exciting. If you don't know, it's like a crusade or a jihad from Medieval 2. Uh, but for the Dark Powers. Where is it for Dale? A massive push for Dale. Battle of the Five Armies. Are we going to see it a second time? Ooh, going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Alright, Mordor and the Orcs of Gundabad have joined. Dale, get your defences ready. And so should everyone else around them as well. Erebor, Thranduil, they should all prepare for this. Oh, here it is, the invasion force. Uh, controlled by Zagar, the Nazgul, I believe. And what do we have here? An Orcish army siege in Osgiliath. If we can get the Nazgul invasion force to help them out, they might just be able to take it. But I got a notification of something much bigger. Uh, something much, much bigger. The Hornburg is under siege. So is Gineard. Rohan should probably hold out here as well if we can get the reinforcements in. We'll see. Oh, okay, they took the village. Um, but the Hornburg still stands. Evil armies grow, goblins of Moria. And let's check out East of Skiliath. So the army, yeah, the invasion's heading north. They didn't help with the attack. I think Gondor again should be able to hold out here. But eventually, they are going to get drained down, eventually. Yeah, Gondor held out yet again. This is usually a very long stalemate. But eventually, something's going to happen. Eventually. And it's going to be big when it does. Uh, how's the Isengard front looking? The Hornburg, very well protected right now. Uh, but I did spot an army at Dale. The Snow Orcs have arrived. Controlled by Hazolg. The invasion is here. Can they take Dale? They might be able to survive the first wave, but it's going to be the second and third wave where, uh, where Dale will start to struggle. Dol Amroth and Umbar now have a border. Well, you know what the saying goes, 10th time lucky. Okay, now that's a big force. With reinforcements, they might be able to get somewhere, but getting reinforcements to attack Rivendell is tough. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get squeeze them all in there. Moria has gone to war. Oh, the goblins have gone to war with uh, Dunland. Mordor got pushed back yet again, and Dale not yet under siege. They seem to be waiting for reinforcements, and Dale dares not attack. Nope, goblins, you're not going to make any progress at all here, I don't think. Or at least not for a very long time. The Snowy Orcs have not yet put Dale under siege, but speaking of that faction, they have taken uh, Framsburg from the Vale of Anduin, or the Valesman. 
And it seems like, is that Mordor here? Yeah, Mordor's here to reinforce. Both armies working together, I think, can take Dale. Tand is at war with Dol Amroth, and Dunland and the Goblins of Moria signed peace and are now allies. Ah. Okay, I believe Unbar here took this little island. Uh, I guess that's good for them and bad for Dol Amroth. Uh, taking a look over here, East Australia, guess what, it's under siege. Again, even more soldiers though. Eventually, they will take it, eventually. Uh, let's take a look this side here. There's a few battles going on here, nothing to really commentate over. But over here, is it under siege yet? No, not yet. Any reinforcements nearby? Dolgledur's coming, but they're not bringing much, are they? Not really. Okay, they all saw their chance. They attacked Mordor and completely battered their invasion army. Like, that was a full stack almost. Almost completely gone. Yeah, they... Divide and conquered there. Well played by Dale. But luckily for Mordor, they did make a second army, so they've got more reinforcements coming in. Uh, so they've still got a lot of troops there, but it's not ideally what they wanted, I don't think. Okay, but that's not the big news right now. The big news is that the One Ring, the Ring of Power, has been located. And it is in... Isengard. That's right. Uh, Saruman there must have captured Frodo at some point, and he's got the ring. Interesting. Can he use it? Can Saruman use it, or does he have to? Does he have to conquer the city? Does that count? I, I don't. I'm not a hundred percent familiar, but the fact that it's in Isengard, a little bit scary for yeah the three peoples right now. Also, speaking of which, Dunland, who has sided with Mordor, now borders uh, the Breelands. And uh, the Dúnedain now do border Angmar as well. Yeah, up here. The Hornburg is again under siege. They can bring some reinforcements in. They've got reinforcements over to here. They could actually have a, a fair chance at taking that, I think. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, Rohan came in with reinforcements, but is that going to be enough? No, I think they did attack, but they lost. Or maybe they pulled back. It sounded like a battle was fought. So, uh, yeah, I believe they lost. Oof. Care Andros under attack now by another massive Orcish army. Yep, they're on the offensive again. I think Gondor can yet again hold out there. The defences right now, they're still proving to be strong. Angmar and the Woodland Realm are now at war, but for some reason Run and Dol Guldur, oh yeah, I thought that said Dol Amroth, right, they're allies, that does make sense. Hey, Dale, under siege, and it's by Mordor, they have the Snowy Orcs here as well, uh, who I believe are the Orcs of, yeah, Gundabad really, so Gundabad's here, uh, who they've got up here, they've got Moria, they have Angmar coming, and... You know, D Dol Guldur is providing moral support at the back. <laughs> this is like in the Battle of the Five Armies, these are the dwarves. Everyone brings an army, uh, but the dwarves, you know, Thorin's group of dwarves, he brings like ten, ten guys and a little hobbit and calls for an army. That's what Gold, uh, Dol Guldur is doing right now. <laughs> I think Dale will fall. If they use the reinforcements right, I think they can do it. But if Erebor gets involved and helps out, no, Dale will stand. And there we go, we have a Mordor Dale. Beautiful, beautiful. And that allows the other armies now to go back home and continue conquering. That is a good move uh, for the worshippers of Melkor. Good move by them. And the king of Dale died as well. Dale has been raised. Well done, Mordor. Well played. Successful invasion. Well done to them. And they can now concentrate on their main front even more. It back into this meat grinder right here. Unbar making a move as well. And they took it. Barad Ham. Oh, no, that's not Ham. Han. Yeah, Han has fallen to Unbar. Another loss. 
or Doldrel Dur Doldrel Dur Dol Amroth. I'll get it right first times one day. One of these days I'll get it right. Ah, oh, Saruman's out for a stroll as well. It seems there's a little bit of a Mordor traffic jam going on here. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Edoras and the Hornburg. I got them mixed up. Are both under siege on the same turn. They're going to lose both battles, but still, it's going to hurt Rohan financially. At least a little bit. Oh! Oh, I was about to say, that's a lot of troops, and... Maybe they can do it, but I didn't want to call it for like the 20th time and get wrong again. They did it though, Mordor, at last. Taken Eastern Osgiliath. About time. <laughs> um, the Erid Luin rejects the gift sent by Sauron of the Rings. They've sided with the three peoples. Yeah, Eastern Osgiliath, and that's a lot of troops. They're putting this fort under siege. Un under siege. They could possibly... Take Western Osgiliath as well. That would be possible for them. They do have the troops. Yeah, I think we're really seeing the might of Mordor now starting to flood on in. Ornberg still under siege. Uh, Salmon Man coming to help out. And they lost again. The Hornberg is a vital settlement for Rahan. Because as long as they hold that, Isengard will not fully invest their troops um, into Rohan's territory and actually take all of these settlements. They will a little bit, but not a full investment. They'll keep sending spare troops over here, but keep losing because of the garrison stripped and general units in there. So, yeah, this is actually a very important settlement, but eventually, this will fall. It does fall eventually. And when it does, Isengard's just gonna pour in and it's gonna be chaos. Or Rohan might be able to hold just long enough for reinforcements to get here, like, I don't know, the Dwarves to win, or the Elves, or something like that. Maybe Gondor beats Mordor? We'll see something, possibly. Ooh, Thranduil's Halls, under siege. They're not gonna take it, but... No, at, le at least they're uh, showing the attempt. Dale wanting to take back Dale from Mordor? Surely they should take that. Yeah, I can't see them losing. They should be fine there. But still losing it in the first place was a big hit against them. So they are definitely gonna be weak. Uh, but over here, they did take the fort, which is good for Mordor, it means they don't... It means they can invest more on Gondor and they don't have to keep pulling troops back to deal with this. Kerandros not under siege, but Western Osgiliath is. I doubt they'll take it. Gondor has quite a good defence here, but if we can get some reinforcements in, slowly batter it down, like they did with Eastern Osgiliath. Eventually, they'll break through. Dale has been retaken. Well done to Dale there. Well done to them. Yeah, they got it back. And Mordor pulling off back home. Uh, they lost that Western Osgiliath, but they did take uh, this settlement here, which means they can invest even more into Gondor. Where are these troops going? Is there like a secret route to hop across here? I believe there is in Third Edge. I can't remember if there is one in Dak. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that could be an interesting move. Attack from the back on all fronts. Well, at least Gondor doesn't have to worry about the south. Uh, that's good for them. Oh, Kand has arrived. Osgiliath under attack again. Yeah, Kand is here on the front. Even more pressure on Gondor and Dol Amroth. But whose side will they take? I don't know. Like, they, they could take any side. I believe they can go to war against Mordor still. I'm 99% um, sure of that. Uh, you know, due to the Blue Wizards, uh, Blue Wizards event. But yeah, it still is a loss for them. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. How will the, what will the AI do? Uh, did Isengard expand? I don't think so. I saw something flash on the map. Maybe they did. Nah, I could be wrong. Uh, but Dol Guldur did. They swooped in and took, uh, Duneberg from, uh, the Veilman. Alright, let's check out the Mordor front. Ooh. Gondor does have a lot of troops here, though. They can probably defend one city, but if they invest this army to defend one, they might lose the other. I don't know, if this army goes for Western Australia, and so do these reinforcements, they could lose Kerr Andros, and that would give the Orcs at least a bit of a route to put pressure on Minas Tirith. I believe Gundabad, yes they did, I think they took this settlement, 
uh, from the Dwarves of Erebor. Is that who they are? I'm a bit lost on the map, hold on a minute. Uh, here's Erebor, yes, I believe I took that settlement from them there. Which does p put pressure on Dale again and Erebor, but Erebor, they've got a lot of troops in there, they should be able to hold for now. And that's turn 40. That's where this episode 1 has to sadly end. With a lot of pressure right now on the three peoples. A lot of pressure. Even the Witch King of Angmar has arrived. Care Andros still under siege. Ooh. How is this gonna go? I think one wrong move by Gondor here on the front, and they're gonna lose it all. I think that's all it's gonna take. One wrong move. The One Ring still sitting comfortably in Isengard. And I believe that's everything to say for part one. I do hope you have enjoyed it. This is the AI only divide and conquer version 4.5 campaign. No one's ever done one of these before. AI versus AI and we're just here to spectate. Have fun, see what happens and have a bit of a laugh at how dumb the AI is. Although when I say that I'm not like uh, throwing any like hate towards the developers of a mod. They've done a brilliant job, uh, but still the AI can never be perfect um, on this engine. That's just the Medieval 2 engine, that's just how it is. That's just Total War games in general, but still it's fun to laugh at the AI. I love this mod and I'm really happy to finally be covering an AI only campaign for it. That being said, it's not easy. Uh, this video may be about 20 minutes for you, but it's definitely not been 20 minutes for me. Because uh, most of the end turns and scrolling through the map, just like checking the settlement, see what's going on, most of that does get cut. So if you have enjoyed, uh, please do subscribe or like the video or both. It does really help out the channel and makes this much more worthwhile for me. Because it's quite a big, difficult project, but... It's a good one that hopefully many of you will enjoy, so yeah, just by liking and subscribing should make it much more worthwhile for me. On top of that, if you do happen to know anyone who likes Divide and Conquer, Third Age, AI only campaigns, or anyone who would be interested in this, please do share it with them as that helps me grow and again, you know, makes it worthwhile and all of that. I've been Melkor, hope to see you in part 2, which should be on Sunday. Three episodes per week, Sunday morning. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>